Hello and welcome to this tutorial number five in the multi-panel series using Java in NetBeans to create essentially a game with alternative panels for different kinds of button or other kind of uh, supporting facilities. We've created so far um, panels which are using the border layout such that we have and I'll just run this program so you can see what is happening with it um, here you have it you have in fact an east panel and a west panel but the button on the west panel has been removed because a game has been uh, put in its place and in the south panel we have a button which is toggling between run and stop legends on the surface of it now how that happens I'm going to be showing you but it is essentially the same button we had before which said when you clicked it multi panels panel south. Obviously there's a lot to say about the game and uh, how this game is actually constructed um, but that's not really the purpose of this particular tutorial is although I will mention some aspects of it. Enough to show how it became oriented into or set into the west panel. Notice too that this is resizable. I could have fixed the size but I decided not to because I wanted to show how you can actually make it uh, change size and what would happen. There are obviously better uh, fit sizes than others and even by trial and error without uh, much mathematics or arithmetic you can find out what the actual best sizes are. Right, so that's that. Let's look at the code. First, let's start off with the project frame. The code for that. Um, oh, I should say also, notice I've got the files tab of NetBeans open here and showing the images folder and its content here and also the source folder and the content there. This is just to show you that the images folder is at the same level as the source folder. Um, that is a good place to put your development images but you can indeed put your development images also into the um, the distribution uh, folder when it's created uh, in order to distribute your work in a jar file. But if you want to know more about jar files please see another tutorial I did uh, a year ago or so. Well let's look at the project itself yes I think that's the best thing to show you um, then I'm going to make that smaller so I can concentrate on showing you the source code. Right well the source code is very much like you would expect it to be because all it's doing is what it did before which is just setting up the other panels as you can see here. Um, if you've come into this tutorial at this point you may want to go back to one of the earlier tutorials to see uh, what on earth happened before that we had this configuration. Um, this is key where we're actually uh, setting the uh, panels to the orientation that we want using border layout east, west and south. Right, let's go to the east panel because that won't take very long. The east panel has got nothing much new in it. Um, it's just really the same as before and the only thing to remark on is that there is an active button. Uh, it, we obviously would want to do something more with that later on but that's what it does at the moment and the panel cells has got a button in it which is um, well new it's got a button which says run and of course it's got an action listener otherwise we won't ever know what happens if you click it and I've set the layout to flow layout for the south um, panel 
because well why not there's no reason not to have that uh, layout so I've explicitly stated it there and then I add the JB or J button to the panel and the only other thing to say here is it's got action listener implemented so it must have the default must have this method which it's got and uh, we collect from the E object the source and we test the source and if it's the button which of course it, it will be then um, we actually say that the game can run or more uh, actually uh, perhaps more truthfully that the run variable in, is um, which is in panel west um, if it's true we um, set it to false and if it's false we set it to true uh, we saw that toggle effect visually just now if the run um, variable which is boolean is true then we change the legend or text to show stop otherwise we ch uh, change it to show run so we toggle the value of the boolean which is flagging up or switching on this button and we show what state it's in via these two alternative legends this is a special kind of variable which we need when we handle panels it's a class variable it's not an instance variable and but one can see that one actually has to state not this in front of it but uh, the name of the owner of the uh, variable which is panel west uh, the best way to see that is to look at panel west so we're going to jump over to there now and see panel west now panel west is full of lots of good stuff uh, but right at the top we see that there is in fact a boolean variable run set to false initially uh, which is public but it's also not only public but it's static that means it has a global effect it's not on the heap and so it can be um, interrogated at any time during the program to see what its state is indeed the um, the, st the status is indeed whether it's true or false is very material of course because it will start and stop the game so just to reiterate to actually uh, use or look at or change this run variables um, value from false to true true to false we have to be able to state its owner which is panel west in front of it because it's a class variable being static and I'm going to skip over for the moment uh, the rest of the initialization of this game and go down to um, see what happens when we try to uh, move the avatar we see that we can move it up, move it right, move it down and so on we can check to see if it's got its reward which is the ones, the ones are rewards like fruit maybe and the twos are blocks or obstacles um, or maybe boulders that means it can't walk through and the F is the finish so that's when it wins in the key pressed um, method we actually check to see initially if panel west run is false because if it is it means that we should not accept any key presses so we return so that effectively stops the program from running um, otherwise if the uh, key pressed is right we move it right if it's left we move it left and so on um, if it's the escape key we reinitialize and populate the grid this is just because um, in this particular game you can reset it by simply 
clicking the uh, pressing the escape key and starting all over again with a different configuration okay so uh, these are just necessary um, methods uh, in order to implement that interface okay so if we run it again have a look at that again and see what we have I have to pull this over because it's actually in the middle of my screen but not in the middle of your tutorial screen okay so uh, at the moment uh, it says run which means it's not able to be run so if I click here and then press my right arrow left arrow keys nothing is happening uh, if I click on here by the way we just get that if I click on the run button it now says stop and that indicates to me that maybe it will run this time so if I click on the interface and now uh, press down and I can actually eat my fruit and oh dear I'm pressing left key I can't get through there I can't get past these boulders or obstacles but I can get home and win okay so what was the point of that remember in this tutorial what we're trying to show you is that you can with these multi panels uh, this multi panel approach um, just put into in this case the west panel the game that you want to show or the application you want to show and use the other panels um, as support uh, features or facilities to facilitate you now finally just a word about where you can go with this from here one could put over here on the right hand panel that is the east panel you could put for support features like for instance being able to navigate via buttons instead of keys um, a weird way to go but you could do that uh, so you could have buttons like uh, right buttons, up buttons, left buttons, whatever down button and um, another thing you could have is some information about the rewards of the game and so on how many points you've scored um, you could in the south button here have more um, buttons which uh, give you options in your game or your application so for example you might by clicking one button um, make more fruit appear or uh, make it all reset like the escape button does or you could have um, a feature where you click a button and some kind of enemy appears um, terrorizing your poor self as the avatar um, obviously this is endless what you could do because you have this whole panel to put your uh, new buttons and thus options in you also have this but, uh, panel here and if you wished you could although we uh, did not take advantage of the north panel remember nor the center panel we have not used that we could use a north panel or a center panel now just a final word about um, how I've gone with this particular game which is just an example for the west panel you'll see or you would have seen that it's actually mapped via a grid here this is just a linear array it looks like a two dimensional one but it isn't it's just where I've cunningly split the lines it's actually just a one dimensional array and uh, this helps me to see visually what it looks like when the layout manager makes it look like it's a two dimensional um, grid uh, the game when in fact it isn't it's just one dimensional uh, or rather it's using a one dimensional array at the back of it um, now there's this way of uh, doing it and there's also a way I showed in an earlier tutorial that you don't have to do this you can use no no manager at all and just absolutely position uh, your buttons and uh, your avatar and um, in that way achieve much the same thing and here collision detection how I know that I'm eating something or not be able to eat something or even move into it like a, if I'm at a 2 I can't go through it or onto that particular square or tile it's done via a lookup of this uh, grid but it could also be done as I showed in another tutorial via collision detection 
and the collision detection you could use is exploiting the rectangular nature of the button and the fact it does have an intersection method uh, attached to its rectangular object which underlies it and uh, if you want to know more about that please look up my earlier tutorial so this isn't the only way you can make this game work you could um, do uh, with, with the grid this is the simplest way um, to make this kind of game work um, because it, it turns some of the uh, problems you have like constraints checking constraints it makes them fairly simple uh, or you, you could use as I say collision detection and absolutely no layout managers at all just null and you can get the same effect uh, needs a little bit more code but in some ways um, it's more powerful however this is simpler to use a grid which is why I've done it much quicker to write um, so there's an example of a game placed into the west panel of the multi panels thank you for watching I hope it's been useful to you